Welcome to No Front Brakes, where I ride mountain bikes with a prosthetic arm. Earlier this week, I've gotten to experience one of the cooler things I've had the opportunity to do with the channel, and that was to talk to some Boy Scouts about what it means to be an adaptive athlete. It was great to just hear what these kids were curious about and answer their questions and help them with their disability awareness badge. With their scout masters and their parents' permission, I made a cut of some of their questions and I hope it's as fun to watch as it was to answer. Hi guys. Hi. 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 Um, this is Mr. Eric. Everybody say hi, Mr. Eric. Hi, hi Mr. Eric. Eric. Hello. So, Mr. Eric, the boys have been going through disability awareness merit badge and the purpose of the disability awareness merit badge is to help them to recognize that there are more various types of disabilities how they can recognize them what adaptive technologies there are you want to just go ahead and start and talk to them a little bit and then we'll do questions later sure hi guys my name is eric i uh, uh decided to start a youtube channel uh over last summer i got a new bike and i was really excited about it so uh, I had a camera already and I started recording it and I was riding for a couple months and uh, a guy who he used to own a prosthetic clinic so he would make prosthetics for people that needed uh, that were missing arms legs um, and he helped them do whatever sport uh, they wanted to do and so I went and met with him historically I'm a very stubborn person and I always thought hey, uh, if I'm going to learn how to do something, I'm going to figure out how to do it uh, without any sort of adaptive technology. Um, and then finally, I was getting to the point where it, I wasn't going to get any better at riding my bike unless I gave it a shot. So I went and met with him. After five appointments, he came back and it brought back a carbon fiber uh, prosthetic that I wear on every bike ride now. And I've been just filming and doing the YouTube thing. Uh, and I entered some races this past uh, spring. And so that those have been going really well. So yeah, that's about, that's about it. I, I, all I, all I do when I make my videos now is I try to try to highlight um, either things that are challenging or difficult for me and talk about how how I can overcome them and and basically just just do anything that any other mountain biker would do. Okay, so when I was a kid, I had one and there was a strap that went up my arm and it went around my shoulder and I would flex this shoulder and when it make it would make the the hand open and close or however there were different things that they would put on the end that would allow me to pick up things. Uh, but this one's a little different, so. First thing is I have this thing, it's like a sleeve. And so the sleeve goes on like this. It's just like rubber, like a, it's kind of like a, a wetsuit for someone that scuba dives almost. So once I put that on, it has this screw on the end. And inside here, you see, can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. That's where that's where that goes. And, and it, uh, this, this has, here, I'll try to get closer. See how it has those ridges on it? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what makes it snap in. So it takes a little bit of force, but did you hear it click? Yeah. Yep, I heard it. And then that's how that's how it stays on. So there's no straps, there's nothing. It's basically just pops in through there and then it grips onto my bones and my forearm on either side. And then it does not come off. I can be riding a bike and bouncing around and it and it won't fall off. And then there's a button here that I push and then it can pull off like that. And inside is like this really soft, like rubber material. So you can see, even though I have a prosthetic, I still still wreck my bike every now and then. <laughs> and then how does that attach to, is, is the handlebar special or is it a regular handlebar? It, uh, I do have, the handlebar is special. So the way that this is supposed to work is, it's supposed to be like this. And then the handlebar sits right here, right? And there's a, there's a hole in it and there's a, a peg just like on the back of like a pickup truck. And normally it would just sit on there and I would just ride. But I actually flip it around because the kind of riding I do and the races that I do, sometimes I have to get back over my seat when I'm going off of something really tall, like a big drop, a big ledge. 
or if I'm climbing up, I have to put my bars to the chest or put my handlebars to my chest and really pedal hard to, to climb up a really steep part. So I flip that so that way my arm can move be at this angle or be at this angle and I'm, I'm not stuck, you know, with stuck at just at one angle if it was like this. Cool. Let's take some questions from the boys. Abraham, you first since you're right in the front. My name is Abraham and my question is, were you born with your arm like that? Yes. Um, so I was born a long time ago in, in the year 1980. Um, before they, they, they didn't have a whole lot of, uh, research or science into what caused certain birth defects. And so I think to this day, they still don't know, uh, what caused mine, but I, I was born that way. And it, it was never, you know, sometimes you hear of people that get into accidents or they were in the military or whatever, whatever other causes for, for them missing limbs and, and. You know, they have a recovery process where it needs to heal and they need to wrap it. But I never had that because I was just so like my hand just never grew. I still have little fingers. It's just anything. And you can even see if I put my elbows the same, my whole forearm is shorter. So for whatever reason, it just didn't grow. So I was born that way. Um, my name is Ben. Um, I was wondering, like, is it hard to like only use one hand for stuff? Uh, it's funny. I don't. I don't really think about it too much. Um, I will be forty in a couple of years, uh, so I've had almost four decades of not having a hand. So I just don't. Sometimes, you know, I my my wife jokes around that sometimes that she even forgets. Like she'll ask me to hold a bunch of things, and she'll forget that maybe I can't hold them all. Um, uh, I just always learned how to do things with just having one hand, so I, I don't really think about it too much. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer, like uh, I remember when I was in kindergarten, um, one, of the, one of the things to go to first grade was you had to learn how to tie your shoe. Well, I couldn't tie my shoes until I was like in third grade, it kind of gave me a pass on that one. But, uh, I, sure enough, I just learned, I learned how to do it. I wasn't gonna wear Velcro for the rest of my life just because I wasn't gonna be able to learn how to tie my shoes. Mm -hmm. um, is it hard to ride the mountain bike with the uh, prosthetic? It is a lot easier now. Um, so before, so if this is the handlebars, and I would, if these are the handlebars, I would have to put the palm of my hand. So think about riding a bike and having your wrist be the thing that you rest on. And if, especially if you're not on the road, if you're out in the woods and it, your bars are bouncing around, it gets, it gets a little scary. So I'd say now it's probably a lot easier for me, but overall it's a lot safer than me not having it. My name is Thomas. Do you play any sports with your prosthetic? Uh, I don't now, but I used to. When I was in high school, uh, I played soccer, which, you know, arguably you don't really need to have two hands to play, right? If you if you touch the ball, it's a free kick, it's a penalty kick anyway. Um, <laughs> so I did play, I played a couple years of soccer. Uh, I was on the swim team for a few years too. Uh, and so that actually went better than I thought it would. Uh, I, I was on the swim team for two, maybe three years, and I went and swam and competed in districts. So um, they do make they do make prosthetics. They make this thing that looks like, it basically lo looks like a little paddle. But by that point, I hadn't had a prosthetic for like four or five years. And I decided that if I was gonna swim competitively, that it was just going to be uh, me without any sort of adaptive technology. I'm Jonas and my question is, uh, was there any obstacles to uh, like bike around? Before, before I got my prosthetic, yeah, there was. Um, I would always, uh, I would always get blisters just from the way that I would ride the bike. I would get blisters right here because when I'm riding bike, I'm sweating a lot. So I, I'd figure out some way to put a Band-Aid there or use medical tape, which always hurts to take off because it rips out all your hair. Um, or I would 
Uh, I used a sweatband like some basketball players have on their wrists. I would put it there and that would kind of keep it for a little bit, keep it from rubbing my uh, grips. Uh, those, that's the main obstacle. Um, I also had problems going off of jumps before I got my prosthetic um, because if I would go off a jump and if you're holding onto your handlebars, you control, you know, which way it goes. But if I would go off a jump and my handlebars would turn the wrong way, it was harder for me. I only had half the power to be able to straighten it out before I hit the ground. So I did, I did wreck a whole lot more before I got my prosthetic. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Gallon, and my question is, what's your favorite video game and why? Oh boy, uh, <laughs> let's see. That's a, that's a tough question. Mr. I, George says you're terrible at video games, by the way. I used to play Destiny with George. I haven't played it in uh, quite a while, but I did really like that game. I don't have a whole lot of time to play anymore, but when I do, I, I, I'll play like PUBG or one of those types. I have a question. So when you compete in the mountain bike races, are you competing against um, everybody or is there a special class for others with prosthetics or is it I mean because realistically you know maybe they're I don't know is there is there a separate class there there might be at a national level um, however when I race uh, regionally there's there is not so I'm racing just against an open field there's a couple different types of races in mountain biking there's cross country which just means that there's one big loop around a piece of property or something. And it means that for about 45 minutes, typically to an hour and 15 minutes, you're just riding as hard, as fast as you can for as long as you can without stopping. Um, and then there's downhill, which is, you know, it's usually at a mountain, like at a ski resort, uh, but in the summertime and you ride a chairlift up and then you start and you go down the mountain. I ride somewhere in between, it's called enduro races, where they'll have a race will be, you know, anywhere between eight to 14 stages. And there's a start gate and an end gate. And so you start at the top and you, or you climb your bike up to the top and that part isn't timed. You go through a start gate and you just pedal as fast as you can or do whatever you can to get down to the end gate. And then, then your time stops, and then you have to get up to the next one, and it, you just do that over and over. So you said that you've been, throughout your life, fairly resistant to adaptive technologies until this one. So is yeah. this gonna, is this going to change your mind and open the door to look at other things, or is um, that, is that, is that sure. already passed? It would have to suit a very specific need. Um, and plus, there's also that 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 old saying like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I was thinking about it um, since I got my prosthetic. I was like, well, what else would I? What other use would I have for a prosthetic? And I thought about a keyboard. And then I thought, well, I'm a pretty fast typer now. If I got a special keyboard, would I would I type slower and for how long? And the same thing goes with like video games or oh, I'm trying to think what else, swimming. We have we have a pool, so I don't I don't know. I don't know. There I think mountain biking is probably the thing with the biggest learning curve that I've I've had uh, that I've faced yet. As far as like all the activities that I that I do now, mountain biking is probably the most physically demanding. So I'm not sure if I would get a prosthetic for anything else unless it was as difficult. My name's Skyler, and how many races have you been in? Uh, I think four or five. I don't think I'll ever race professionally or or win a bunch of races, or at least in that class, unless I'm unless I you know just keep at it. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, for me, it's all about uh, the community of the the enduro racing community. Everyone's really friendly. There, even though it's a competition, it's not very competitive. Like everyone rides as fast as they can, but there's no, no one ever gets upset if you don't do as well or better than someone else. Do you have any questions for the boys, Mr. Eric? I actually do. Do any of you have any friends that have any, uh, that are like missing uh, limbs, arms or legs and, and do they play any sports? Uh, I, I play basketball. Well, you just broke it. You're going to get it back soon. <laughs> I met somebody who does that. Yeah? 
Did they have a prosthetic or were they just not using one? Oh, uh, they had a prosthetic for their leg. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've met I've met a couple other people that that um, because of uh, because of YouTube, uh, I just met a guy. Um, he was in Oregon. Uh, one of my friends builds um, the downhill trails at a ski resort, and he was shuttling a guy up to the top, and he had the same type of prosthetic that I did. And he's missing his left hand, and I'm missing my right hand, and we're gonna send each other the gloves that we haven't been able to use. <laughs> It's really funny, and I, I've met a couple other people that are that are you know are either missing legs or um, one guy uh, was missing both arms, which is, is sounds really scary to me, but to him you know it's probably the same thing where he, that's how he learned to ride a bike, and and that's what he does. If it's all you know, there's nothing wrong, there's no difficulty about it. Yeah. Was there anything else you want the boys to know, learn, or understand before we depart? I would say that if if you guys uh, you know make friends with anybody that that is missing an arm uh, or leg or whatever or has a prosthetic or you know maybe their maybe their hearing's impaired or their vision, um, while it's it's good to be kind kind to them and and see if there's anything you can do to help them. Uh, a lot a lot of people I think like to figure things out for themselves. So. You know, they'll. I, 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 I'm willing to bet that if they're playing a sport with you or just doing an activity, if or or, if, you know, I I know that uh, a lot of people with disabilities are even in Boy Scouts. So uh, I would say, you know, let them let them try to figure out things for themselves, and if they ask for your help, then then go for it. Um, and that they're, I think you'll be surprised at what they'll be capable of. Awesome. That's really good advice. All right, boys, what do we say to Mr. Eric? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this was really cool, Eric. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions down below in the comments. I'd love to have you all on this journey with me. Check out these two videos on the left that you might be interested in, especially if you're new to the channel. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay shreddy.